So the holidays are over and either you got yourself an arcade stick or a friend, family, loved one probably got you an arcade stick or something. They might have watched my videos. You might have watched my videos. You know, I I think I know a thing or two about arcade sticks at this point. So after a whole week, it is now the first when this video will go up. So after about a week, um, you're probably, you've probably been playing on your arcade sticks for a while. You're... You probably like them, you probably don't, I don't know. I don't know how everybody thinks. And you probably decided, hey, I want to mod my arcade stick. Well, Hurtbox is here with Hurtbox Arcade Corner to do just that. And we're going to be talking about how to mod your arcade stick. So for the purposes of this video, I re-borrowed my friend, the uh, Panthera my friend was permanently borrowing from me uh, that I mentioned in the Panthera Evo video. I was originally going to use the Panthera Evo to do the modding video as uh, I did kind of like that stick and I kind of wanted to switch some parts out, see how that actually would turn out. But I ran into some problems with that, which I will cover in its own video. That Panthera seriously needs it. Uh, I might have some solutions for the problems I have, but who knows. So I went with the original Panthera because it is easily moddable. Of course, I could have gone with the JoJo's arcade stick, but I didn't because... Look at Kakuin, he, he's so happy. I just want him in every shot. I don't want him down. I don't want to have to have him out of the shot. You know, he's out of the shot right now, but there you go. He's in the shot now. So, the, the Panthera is easily the second best. Of course, there's the Dragon, but that thing is like 20 pounds. That thing is too damn heavy. I am not putting that thing on here and showing you. So, this first part, this, this video is going to be broken into two parts. And the first part is going to be opening up your stick, get acquainted, getting acquainted with how your stick works for changing the artwork, opening it up, and looking at the internals, as well as taking a look at... Um, you know, I was, I was going to do levers, because I had the levers set up here, but the buttons are easier. Uh, this is kind of impromptu. But, um, yeah, so we're going to take a look at switching out the buttons. I'll grab some buttons when I cut to another shot. But, for the purpose of this, buttons are the second easiest thing besides opening up the damn thing most of the time. So, we're just going to go with that. And I wanted to make this kind of digestible, that's why I went with... Uh, this why it's going to be two parts, just because the I don't want it to be like a 30 minute video. I know that my videos, uh, like these kinds of videos, can kind of get a little bit long. So we're just going to try and do it as simple and as fast as possible, not too fast so that you guys can at least get the gist of what's going on here, because a lot of you may not understand these terms or that I'm going to be throwing out or you might have trouble. Uh, modding arcade sticks why you clicked on this video so you're gonna need some tools now you don't need every tool that I have laid out here these are just the ones that I use and the ones that I find to be most helpful when I'm modding arcade sticks when I'm changing artwork when I'm changing buttons when I'm changing levers and uh, the first one which I think everybody should have you don't necessarily need to have it you know but if you got 60 bucks I think this thing's about 60 bucks the I fix it uh, I believe this is the 64-bit kit, and it is amazing for this. <clears throat> it's mainly meant for, like, PC uh, modding, or just, you know, PC uh, maintenance and changing stuff out, which I use it for. I've upgraded my PC quite a bit, and I use this thing almost exclusively when it comes to that. And it works perfectly for arcade sticks too. So I'll just open it up and I'll show you show you right here. I'll get a close-up B-roll of it. Uh, it comes with a really nice driver. It's uh, these are all made in the USA, I think. The company I fix it, they're really, they're really great. They make some good stuff. And it comes with a bunch of it comes with a bunch of bits that you're gonna need. It comes with hex, it comes with um, torque, security, uh, flatheads, Phillips. Yeah, it has almost everything you can need. They even make Bigger. They make like 128-bit kits, and that's insane. Um, the other thing is that sometimes that isn't long enough. So, especially for the Panthera Evo, as you saw, I use this thing. This is the longest screwdriver I have, the Phillips. And that's what I use to get a lot of the screws out on the Evo, because 
it is just too damn, it, it is too damn deep to get into that hole. That's what she said. The other thing is another iFixit driver. Um, you don't necessarily need this one. This is just if you uh, encounter some of the bigger screws when you're taking out the lever, which I will discuss in part two. But this one is kind of nice too because it's double-sided and these have two bits on each. So it's a, it's four bit, it's a four bit driver, or it's four bits on a driver. And then last, and this, this is really only uh, for a couple of things. This is just some needle nose pliers. And the reason why I use these is sometimes um, quick disconnects on buttons become very difficult to pull out. And I'll show you what that looks like when I get in here. But quick disconnects tend to be really hard to pull out sometimes if they're not the, the quick release kind. And so these ones, I usually will grab them and pull them out. And uh, that's worked with me so far. And uh, they're also for Korean um, ball or Korean levers. Korean levers are a pain in the ass to get these, the E clamp or the C clamp, whatever it is, back on. And I will show you that in the video when I do part two, which is levers. So with that all out of the way, we're going to be discussing how to basically open up the arcade stick. There's many different arcade stick designs and there's many different ways to get to the internals of an arcade stick. Some of them will have what the Panthera does and the TE2 and uh, even the Dragon back there has it, which is it is just an easy push of a button or two buttons. And there you go, you've accessed the internals of it uh, with, the, with the tournament edition, the TE2, the one that Mad Cats makes. In here is where you would open up and take out the artwork. I'll be showing all that in B-roll. I'm going to be taking apart like seven or eight of these sticks that I have just to show you kind of the very differences between old and next gen arcade sticks and how to get to their internals. But for the purposes of this video, this is what we're going to be using just so it's really easy and I can display it. I don't have to angle the camera weird. <clears throat> so, what we're going to be talking about is I'm going to be talking about the buttons and then I'll get to the um, I'll get to the artwork section with another stick that I can actually uh, sh pull a plexi off and show you how to take the artwork out and replace it. Now this one opens up but I'm going to show you a few other ones. Um, which ones am I going to do? I'm probably going to do like the crystal. Uh, there's a couple that have that open up from the top like the TE right there the Namco one. And then the Quamba Crystal and like the Obsidian and some of the others, uh, you have to take the screws out from the bottom. And they're generally like six or eight screws. And then the, top, the bottom pops off and you have access to all the buttons and the lever. Just like this, you'll see it like this, but it's not gonna be propped up as nicely as the Panthera.
One of the things that you might want to do if, uh, if you're going to be changing out the buttons on your arcade stick is you're going to want to use a phone or something and take a picture of how the buttons are laid out. Generally, they're not as convenient as the Panthera is where they have everything labeled for you and they have them, you know, color coded. So take a, take a picture of it so that you remember uh, which button, which wires go to which button. That way you're not having to plug things in. I know that back, uh, even, even on this, uh, the Fusion, the very first stick that I have, when I did the modifications on it, I literally wrote on the metal plate each button, red, blue, green, I wrote R, G, B, like I just wrote uh, abbreviations for red, green, blue, and all those for whatever uh, went with each button, just so that I would, re I would remember it. And that's generally a good practice. So try, try and find some way that's convenient that you can re remember, or you have some sort of reference so that you know immediately where to put everything back after you switch the buttons out. Oh my God, I didn't grab any buttons. All right, there we go. I grabbed four buttons. <laughs> it's convenient having everything right there. So for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna go with these Hori, um, the blue Hayabusa buttons that I bought off of, uh, what's his name? Eric from the Retro Arcade Stick Collective on Facebook. Uh, he had those listed. It was, it was so fast, the shipping was fast. Shout outs to that guy. I think he runs it or he's one of the main dudes that are in that um, chat or in that Facebook group. You should all join it by the way, Retro Arcade Stick Collective. Fantastic if you want to um, look at people's arcade sticks and see general questions for modding and stuff. But I bought these buttons off him, it was like 18 bucks shipped and they came in like three days. It was, it was fast. So for the purposes of this, we're just going to do four buttons. Uh, just because once you've seen it about four times, it should be pretty easy and self-explanatory uh, to do the rest of the last four. And if it's not, uh, and you got your dick caught in a ceiling fan, I'm not at fault here. That, that's all you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a close-up of this, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be doing it twice. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good, if I must say. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking these quick disconnects out. How should I do this? All right, let, let's take a, let's do it the two ways that I usually do it. So let's say that this was too difficult to pull out. Usually I will use these little needle nose pliers. I'll grab it. Don't grab it back here. You'll pull the wire out and you'll mess up the uh, quick disconnect. I'll usually grab it here at the main part and then gently I will rock it back while pulling and sometimes you gotta use a little bit of force, but there you go, it'll come out. That one, these actually are a little bit difficult. I have not had the chance to pull these out. So, and the reason why is because, of course, everybody has switched to these. These are the secure, the quick disconnect versions. So you generally just push down a tab and they come out pretty easy. Um, don't pull them out like I did. Make sure they have that little tab in there. If they do, then you have to push that and pull it because I've seen people rip the bottoms of these buttons out uh, trying to pull these uh, quick disconnects out. And if you pull them out like that, like I did, generally they go back in and they're kind of loose. So as you can see, it's like really loose now. And that's because it kind of messes up the, uh, the deal that latches onto the that latches onto the, the button. It doesn't affect it, it's just, you know, it's not as secure anymore. All right, so now that we have the wires unplugged, comes this, this, this is pretty much the easiest part. What we're gonna be doing is there's gonna be these little tabs, and it's kinda hard to see with the lighting, but there you go, you can see that right there. These little tabs right here are gonna be on the sides of your push button. You're just gonna press those in. There's gonna be one on this side, one on the other. You're gonna push those in and there it goes. The button will be popped right off. If you have a, um, most sticks, almost all sticks now that are currently, uh, that are licensed sticks are gonna have Sanwo buttons and they're all gonna be basically push buttons. They're gonna be snap-ins. 
And if you happen to be one of the ones that gets a stick that has same Mitsu buttons, um, while they do have the same kind of push-in button, the snap-in buttons, they do make ones that screw, so the difference would be instead of this tab, these two tabs, there'd be a little screw thing that you would tighten up. Um, you might have seen it in a couple of videos. I think I might have a couple of videos where you see some Seimitsus, or I have crowns that do the same thing, crown buttons that are like that. Anyway, most, most buttons are basically push-in, so you don't really have to worry about that. But if you do have one, there's just going to be something that you have to unscrew, and then when you unscrew that, the bottom part out, then the button will just fall out like normal. So, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install our new button. So these are the Hori Hayabusa's. The, they're essentially the same. They're similar. They just have a... These buttons are just different. I, I, I'm going to eventually do a video that details like different buttons and stuff, but for all intents and purposes, they're, they function the same. They're just, you know, there's a size difference clearly you can see. One is, uh, one shaft is uh, shorter, the plunger is shorter than the other. So, all you gotta do is since they're snap-in buttons, all you're gonna do is you're gonna line it up with the hole and push it in. And there you go. Now, all you gotta do is just reattach the two quick disconnects. And uh, make sure you hold it on the other side because if you try and push it in, you're just gonna, a lot of the times you push the button in, it's not gonna do anything to the button, it's just, you know, it doesn't, it, it makes it harder to push the quick disconnect and just hold it on the other side when you do it. But that's basically all you have to do to change out the buttons. And you're just gonna do that for the next three or however many buttons you're replacing. We're only doing four. Um, you can do six, you can do eight, you can do five, however many buttons you wanna replace. There's other things that you can do too, like multicolors and stuff like that, but that's all up to personal preference. This is just showing you the basics. So, we're gonna go ahead and just do these last three really quick. It's gonna time lapse so you can see these without any interruptions. And uh, generally, like a rule of thumb is that uh, don't take all the buttons out at once. Just do it one by one, like I'm doing right here. Just do them one by one so you remember which one is which. You know, it makes it easier on yourself. God damn, I scratched myself on this thing. Wow. Ah, okay. So, here is where something like a flathead comes in handy. I'm just gonna use, I'm gonna try and get at it with the big driver, but uh, sometimes you, you run into this little issue here where it is just too difficult to kind of put your finger in and get like a good, to get in there to push that tab in. So, one of the options is if I can do it, you can usually kind of just twist it like that but if you can't twist it, if it's too tight, sometimes it is too tight of a fit, you can gently push in one of the tabs like that and then it'll pop out. Um, so these are solid plungers. So these are very, these are very hard durable plastic. It's gonna take a lot of force to break these tabs that you see here on the sides. When you're using, if you're buying aftermarket Sanwa parts, and you're going with the metallic series or the clear series, be very careful when you're pushing these tabs in. I have gotten countless clear buttons and metallic series buttons that have one tab that's broken or both are completely broken. And if you flip the stick upside down, the buttons will fall out and they'll just be hanging by the quick disconnects. I don't know why, they use such weak plastic for the clear uh, for the clear series and the metallic series, but it breaks very easy. These tabs are very brittle on those two. For these ones, it's generally very hard to break these tabs. I don't think I've actually ever broken one on these solid color plungers. That's what the main body is called. But. Uh, if you do end up going with a clear series or a metallic series, that is the gold, the silver, and the uh, gunmetal gray ones, 
just be careful uh, when you're put. I've even had them break. No lie. Like, 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 no lie. I've had them break while pushing them in. That's how, that's how brittle they are. I, I've, I've broken a couple on um, the, uh, when I modded, I believe I put out, yeah, I put out the video where I modded the Tekken 7 Hori stick. Uh, I broke a couple of those buttons, the taps. I broke a couple of those taps just be, just for pushing it in. I don't know why, but they are very weak plastic. They're very weak plastics, and uh, it, it displeases me greatly that uh, they went, that they break so easy. But there we go. So this is generally uh, all that you have to do. So I'm just going to quickly move the camera back and zoom it out and we can see our final product so you can see that these four buttons are blue here's the original four that we had uh, that we swapped out now that's pretty much all you're gonna have to do if you're switching out buttons so if you're using the fight stick mini which is just hanging there I don't know why or the Street Fighter or uh, the Mad Cats Alpha stick those ones are cheap, and um, they have them soldered onto a PCB rather than with quick disconnects. If you have the soldering capability and the know-how to uh, work with some of these sticks, the the Street Fight I keep calling it Street Fighter because the, the Mad Cat's Alpha Stick, you can mod it to have normal Sanwa parts with quick disconnects. It's a pain in the ass, and there is a video on there uh, on YouTube about it on how to do it. And if you follow that guy and that's what you're doing with the alpha stick and you have quick disconnects, works the same. You just have to, there's just a whole different thing with that. And of course, I did it with a very easy stick. This one, like I said, you push a button, you pop the top off, and you have access to everything you need. Other sticks, of course, uh, most of the time, you're going to be working with them, not with it open in the case, just like, like this. Most of the time, they will you will be unscrewing the back, and you'll be taking the back plate off, and you will have it upside down like this. The stick does kind of get in the way. I mean, you can kind of lean it like that, and sometimes it'll stay like this. Sometimes the weight of the back plate, because it's usually solid metal, will cause an imbalance, and it starts to tip over like this. Um, what I do is, a lot of the times, my stick modding, um, I will do it on my lap. That way, the stick I can just rest between the legs or off to the side. It's not laying on something uneven, or if you really want to try it, you can put it on the edge of a table. But um, the easiest way would be is to remove the stick. That way it's just laying flat and you can get to the internals and pull all the quick disconnects out and switch the buttons and everything. But that is actually going to be in part two because this video is long and I've already covered how to switch the buttons out. and. Um, it's going to be, it, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, I don't want this video to go on very long. So this next vi the next part, part two, which will be coming out the day after this one comes out, is going to be tackling the different kinds of sticks, how to install those sticks, and as well as changing the artwork. Um, I'm not going to do it with the Panthera. I've already explained in the Evo video how that works and uh, in the Panthera Evo video and with the regular Panthera you have to take like a heat gun and peel this off and then get a plexi and you'll be able to screw in uh, the plexi and have new artwork under it. I'm not going to do that with this. When it comes to artwork mods and stick uh, and the stick uh, changing the stick out, I'm going to do that on like the obsidian or yeah I'll do it on the obsidian just because I, uh, I have artwork printed on it that's custom. So I'll show you um, the how to change the stick out as well as how to um, change the artwork. There are there are guides on how to print artwork out, but generally, if you're going to get artwork done, then you know it'll be pretty straightforward. Anybody can do it. But I will tell you the difference between sticks, how to mount them, the little ins and outs of that. So that's going to be in part two. This was part one, just covering how to change the buttons out and how to access your arcade stick. Um, the B-roll footage that I played earlier should show you how to get to the internals of most arcade sticks, unless you have some weird Chinese abomination, like that thing that you can't see because it's obstructed by uh, something, two boxes that are gonna be in another video. But 
unless you have some weird configuration, um, usually you're just gonna go into the back. There's gonna be six or eight screws, like I said. The bottom will pop off. You have access to the internals. Or you have a Panthera or a TE2, and you can just press, or a Dragon, and you can just press a button, open it up, switch it out. Hopefully I have enough footage to show you and I've shown everything as best I can and made it as easy as possible for you to uh, be able to change out buttons confidently and get to the your, inside of your stick. The other thing that I will tell you about is uh, when it comes to the warranty, uh, the warranty void stickers, there was a thing that was passed. Um, for a little while, they wouldn't honor warranties if you broke that seal. There, don't worry about that seal anymore. That something passed, I forget what it's called. It, it's mostly to do on the uh, like the PC tech side, but it does apply to anything with a warranty void if seal broken sticker. And they can't honor that. They cannot, uh, companies cannot deny your warranty if you break that seal. So do not worry about it. I believe the only thing they can avoid your warranty on is if you physically damage the product. So if you were to, if, if this thing had a, vo a warranty void sticker, you went in and in the process of doing that, you ripped something, you broke the, I don't know, one of the, the screw, one of the uh, mounting points or something. Something broke on the inside and it wasn't because of shipping or something. If the warranty is void, that, that, that means the warranty is void. But if you break that seal, don't be afraid to break it. Just, just don't. They won't, they can't tell you, no, your warranty is void because you broke that seal. Something was passed. I forget what it's called, but I think it's the Right to Repair Act is what it's called. But yeah, uh, they can't really do anything about it if you open up the stick. And with sticks that you have to screw out from the bottom, they will have one of those stickers. So don't worry about it. Don't think you're gonna void your warranty. You're not, unless you physically damage something in there, you won't. And uh, they will have to honor the warranty if uh, something does go wrong and it's not physical damage. If you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Comment down in the description. Anybody who follows my other channels knows that joke. Uh, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified when I upload videos. I'm trying to do more uh, arcade stick related stuff uh, at the start of the new year. I'm also trying to stream a lot more on Twitch. You can check that out. It's the same name as the channel. This is twitch.tv slash hurtbox. There's a Patreon. Um, any money contributed there helps us be able to afford you know, new cool gadgets that we can do videos on. And then we have t-shirts as well on the Streamlabs store. We have a bunch of other stuff. There's Twitter, all that social media. And then there's other videos that you can check out. I'm sure that the card thing up there is showing off some of the videos that I've talked about in this video. And uh, yeah, uh, stick around for part two where I do sticks and artwork, replacing the lever and replacing artwork. And uh, yeah, take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.